the Mac West 2022 college football previews. And we we talked about this the other day. The Mac East was a little bit, eh, not, uh, we don't expect a lot from them. How's that? The Mac West, however, this is the stronger side of the conference. This is uh, the teams, how about this? Every single team in the Mac West last year went at least four and four in the conference, and the champion only went six and two. So this is a strong, strong division. Uh, Chris, we're going to start off with the Northern Illinois Huskies. But before we do that, uh, g- give me initial thoughts on the Mac West. You you agree with me? This is a much stronger side of the conference. Well, it's a much stronger side of the conference. But at the end of the day, because of the non-con schedule that all these teams have, and because I think these guys are going to cannibalize each other, I just don't have anybody great. I, th- I think everybody's coming out of here with multiple losses. I okay, I could see that. I could see that. That's I do think now I've got one team that I that I am really high on. <laughs> I'm looking at it and I'm like, hmm, I might have gone a little overboard on this. But uh but we'll we'll figure it out. We will figure all this out. Um let's start off with Northern Illinois. The Huskies, uh, I could not have been more wrong about this team last year. Uh, Thomas Hammock is the coach. They went 9-5, and five, lost the bowl game. Uh, it was a weird, weird ending to the season against Coastal Carolina. Uh, they went 6-2 and two in conference. Uh, you know, returning production, number two in the country, 87%. Uh, they returned 88% of their offensive production. They returned 85% of their defensive production. And yet, if you look at their roster strength, they are still number 104 in the country. Uh, There's not a ton of talent. They did have some pretty big losses here. The wide receiver, Richie, uh, linebacker, Lance DeVoe Jr., the running back, uh, Jevion Ducker, or Jay Ducker, uh, has transferred over to Memphis. You know, you lost the the, the big-time punter that was able to kind of flip the field position there. Their short yardage back, uh, Clint Radkovich, is uh, is gone. Like, and then their center, uh, uh, Braden Pation. Like, they lose... What seemed like a lot to me, really important pieces, and yet they bring back a ton of production. So I found that to be odd. Um, here's what you need to know about the offense. Uh, they avoided negative plays. They converted 83% of 30 fourth down attempts. Uh, most of their fourth down attempts were short yardage. This is a team that really, really liked to run the football. Uh, Rocky Lombardi is the quarterback. He averaged 5.9 yards per non-sack carry last year. Threw for 2,500-plus yards and 15 touchdowns. He was way better than he was at Michigan State. Um, my question is, what ends up happening without the wide receiver, Richie, and without that running back, Ducker? Uh, they still got dudes, but, you know, it, it's going to be interesting. They got Ontario Brown uh, at running back. They got Travion Rudolph. Uh, sorry, Travon Rudolph. Um, they still got some playmakers. They got some things going on on offense, and they were able to do things with that running game that were surprising. Uh you know, it, when you look at the defense, it's a whole different thing. Do you remember how bad that defense was? I mean, they were number 123 yeah. in defense at PPA per drive. Um, they tried to fix that a little bit. They went out, they hired uh, a new co-defensive coordinator, Nick Benedetto from Samford in the FCS level. Uh, they were dreadful last year, but they were number 24 in allowing only 41% of fourth down conversions. The fourth down conversions, they were plus 42% margin between those two. I don't know that that will be replicable again. I don't know that anybody's had anything close to that uh, in, in quite some time. They had 16 freshmen that played on defense last year, which could be part of the problem as to why they were so bad. Uh, 16 freshmen got 160-plus snaps, and that includes seven linemen. So they could be or maybe should be better, but are we sure that trial by fire actually works? I don't know that I can say that. Um, on top of that, they went 7-3 and three in one-score games last year. They were 5-0 and oh in games decided by two points or less or overtime. Um, which that's, is in, the stat, that's the stat I was yeah, looking at. which is insane because th- their turnover margin was number 100 in the country. <laughs> like, <laughs> give me your thoughts here because this team made no sense last year, but they you could tell that they were well-coached. They were number 19 in penalties per game last year. Um you you hope that experience 
will help this team improve a little bit, but I don't know that you can really improve on what they did last year going 9-5 and five and winning the MAC title. Um, again, cheers to Thomas Hammock. Uh, I've got this team at 7-5. and five. I'm, I'm curious uh, what you're looking at with this team. I've got them 7-5 and five as well, exactly the same thing. I think they've got a tough non-con schedule. And, uh, I mean, Vanderbilt, I, I think they'll, they'll handle, um, you know, getting an SEC win will be big for them. But, but Tulsa's been no joke. Kentucky is obviously a beast. We think they're going to be really good this year. Um, I, I think in conference, they're going to do really well. You know, I, you know, I think they could win five, six games in conference and, um, uh, you know, whatever, but it, all those one score games scare me because at some point in time, all we need is the ball to bounce a little bit funny one way or the other. Exactly. And half of them and their record massively swings, massively swings. Still think they're a good team. They're obviously a well-coached team. We talked about the penalties. That's a coaching thing. Um, that's all about discipline. Lost a lot of talent, bringing some new guys in. We'll see if the new guys are as good as the old guys. And, you know, seven and five is exactly where I got them. That's I, I've got them actually six and two again in the conference. Um, yeah, see, I, th- I thought the same thing. I got one coin flip game. I basically have them four, two, and one, uh, and I got a coin flip game in there. Um, but that's kind of it. Yeah, it's, yeah, I've got them losing to Vanderbilt, but it wouldn't shock me if they did beat Vanderbilt. I've got them losing to Tulsa. It wouldn't shock me if they beat Tulsa. Uh, that's right. This is a, that's right. I think they'll, I think they'll split those. That series, like the, this, is the math I'm using. Is I don't know that they'll win this game. I don't know if they'll win that game. But I'm, I don't think they'll go two and zero oh against Tulsa and Vandy. I also don't think they'll go zero oh and two against Tulsa and Vandy. That's kind of how I'm figuring this out. Makes makes sense. Uh, the defensive line looks a, a little weak, uh, but again, I, you know, we're we're doing this based on like recruiting rankings and everything else. Uh, the back seven looks good. Like they, I know they got some good talent uh, in the back seven, but I'm I'm curious about the defensive line. Again, they had 16 freshmen play 160 plus snaps on defense. It, it was trial by fire. It was you get in here and we are going to start playing immediately. And they did just enough. The defense was not good. You're going to need that offense uh, to have that same kind of success uh, because like their PPA margin last year was number 93, and yet their offensive PPA per drive was number 11. The defense was number 123. Like, you couldn't have a more vast difference between the two. So we'll, we'll see what they end up doing this year, but, uh, but we're, we're both looking at about 7-5-ish, and five-ish, and, uh, and I like that. I like that. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to... Da, 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 da. We're going to move on to Central Michigan. And the Chippewas, of course, Jim McElwain's bunch. They went 9-4 and four last year, got their first win over a P5 team since 2017 when they beat Washington State in the Sun Bowl, and that was a last-second game. Uh, they looked like the more athletic and more physical football team against Washington State, which is a bit surprising. Um, they had to hire a new offensive coordinator this year, so they went out and they got Paul Petrino, which could be interesting. Uh, they got their quarterback, Richardson, back, along with the nation's leading rusher, Lou Nichols, they got to develop some wide receivers uh, because they lost Khalil Pimpleton there, uh, along with Ja'Cory Sullivan. But uh, Dallas Dixon being back definitely helps. He had 15.4 yards per reception last year, eight touchdowns. you got to find somebody that provides the explosiveness that Pimpleton did. Uh, when it comes to punt returns, everything, they didn't have a single other guy return a punt other than Pimpleton last year, and he was explosive. He averaged over 19 yards uh, per punt return, and he had two touchdowns. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Um, along with that, you got to figure out what's going on with the defense here. Uh, the defense was pretty good, but you got to figure out who replaces the defensive ends, Hairston and Sadiq. Uh, they combined for 38 tackles for loss and 12 sacks last year. Uh, you're also replacing linebackers and defensive backs. Their, their roster strength right now is number 124 in the country, which is not great. The offense is number 65. That's pretty good. It's high, high up in the MAC. Um, I think they're going to be fine. They won seven of eight down the stretch in 21, including that Sun Bowl win. Uh, they went four and one in one possession games. You got to figure, you know, can they replicate that? Because that's going to be interesting. Um, you know, can the new guys limit explosive plays more than they did last year? I, I don't know. They were number 78 uh, in defensive explosive rate. And that's that's going to be, I don't know, that's tough. Uh, they do return defensive end uh, Thomas and Coombe, 
and they do return defensive tackle Jacques Bristol. So this is a team that, you know, you, you lost eight. By the way, they did lose a second-round offensive tackle, uh, Bernard Raymond. So they lost him, and then they lost their right tackle, Luke Godecki, uh, along with their safety, Alonzo McCoy. So they've got some big holes that they got to fill. But, man, the way Richardson played last year and the way that that offense moved with Lou Nichols, I am high, high, high on this team right now. Uh, brother, I've got them going 9-3. and three. Like, I think... Well, they went 9-4 and four last year. I mean... Yeah. Their so projected SP like Plus... Thing. Their their SP plus record is uh is seven and five. Um they went eight and five against the spread last year. Uh so it's it's not inconceivable that they could go, you know, nine and three again this year. Um they were eight and four heading into the bowl game last year. But I I look at this schedule and the way that it sets up, like yeah, I think they're probably gonna lose at Penn State. They're probably gonna lose at Oklahoma State. I, I think most everything else is winnable. So I, my only yeah, other loss is really at Toledo. Good yeah, yeah, they could they could go ten and two if they want it. You know, if, if everything falls right, I'm with you. I like the uh, addition of Trino there. Um, if he can bring, you know, Daddy's offense uh, that we have seen be unbelievable in college football. Yeah, to a G five school, man, look out, look out, because that thing is explosive. And, and, and you know, I wonder, can you install it in one year? With with you know younger inexperienced guys uh, kind of around you talk about the offensive line stuff like that but um, I, I think they have potential to be real good I have them eight and four but that's because I think this conference this side of the conference every conference game while I think they could win them all I, I also think they could lose two of them just because I I think it's going to be a meat grinder I think yeah. week in and week out between you know you've got them you mentioned Toledo. Uh, you've got Northern Illinois. You've you've got you know, Eastern Western Michigan. I, I I think this conference, this division is a meat grinder, and and I think it's going to be real hard to to just go undefeated through it. No, so I, I don't think you're wrong. They they do play and at I, Toledo. I got, uh, yeah, and, I have no damn idea what games they'll lose. <laughs> they you play, ask me right now. Yeah, I, I don't know. They play at Toledo. They play at Northern Illinois. And they've got at Eastern Michigan. The the other road conference game is at Akron. And I, I, I'm i feeling pretty strong that they'll win that one. But, again, uh, we don't really know what to expect from Joe Moorhead's bunch. So, I mean, you never know. Like it, The, the Mac is always young, crazy. They're green and, 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 yeah, I mean, inexperienced. That's yeah. what we know. But if there is anybody that would be able to develop wide receivers fairly quickly, uh, I would I would trust a Petrino. <laughs> I would that's trust right. a Petrino. That's right. No, no, that's, that's what I'm saying. That <laughs> offense – has potential to be, yeah, really good, real, real on fire, and maybe not this year. Maybe not this year. That might be putting the cart before the horse. I don't if, know. Uh, with, if they with, can hang on, if they can hang on to him, they can build. With Lou Nichols and uh, you got uh, uh, good gracious uh, Daniel Richardson, the quarterback back. Like you got experience at the at the points where you know it really matters. You got some leaders on this team. Um, they got a, they got a strong shot to be really good this year. Really good. Now, 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 here's the other thing. That's a lot of hope that he might be his daddy. And we have seen many a times guys aren't nearly as successful as their daddies. So that's, that's let's true. just under understand. Well, his his that brother. Is, that that is is <laughs> but, I'm sorry, yeah. brother. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, but, I, but, but but not everybody is the same as their family. No, you're not right? wrong. You are not just wrong. Just because one guy's real successful doesn't mean the other is going to be. But the potential is there. It certainly is. We will move on to the Toledo Rockets. And Jason Candle has continued to underwhelm year after year after year. They went 7-6 and six last year. They were 8-5 and five against the spread. They went 5-3 and three in the conference. Uh, had some big losses, like some, some borderline NFL guys. Linebacker Jonathan Jones, cornerback Samuel Womack, their center Bryce Harris is gone, wide receiver Bryce Mitchell, the safety Tyson Anderson, uh, cornerback Justin Clark, and the safety Saeed Holt are both out. Um, they This is a team that always has talent, right? Uh, and yep. most of the talent this year is on defense. They're number 43 in roster strength there. Overall, number 81 because the offense is number 101 
Uh, they do yeah. have, looking at the offense, quarterback Daquan Finn was a freshman last year and played really, really well. 18 touchdowns, only two interceptions. But the offense was 97th in third down conversions and 99th on fourth down conversions. Uh, you got to look at some of the transfers that they brought in. They brought in uh, the running back Boone from Maryland and wide receiver Mikel Barkley from TCU. Uh, could those guys provide a little more consistency on offense? Uh, possibly. Um, they had a 55-45 to 45 rushing to pass balance last year. I wonder if that stays the same this year. Um, because they ran a lot, but I, if they trust the quarterback a little more this year, that might open that thing up. That's what Jason Candle kind of was known for a little bit. Um, their projected SP Plus record is 9-3. and three. Uh, but, again, they always underperform their SP Plus record. Like, this is the best recruiting team in the MAC every single year. Uh, what drove me crazy, this team went 7-6, and six, and yet they were number 7 in PPA margin last year. They should have been a lot better. Uh, a stat that, that drives me insane, they were number 13 in turnover margin, which is awesome. But they were dead last in the FBS in penalties per game. Like, that will kill you every time. Uh, looking at the defense, they finished 14th in sack rate, 16th in overall havoc rate. Uh, the co-defense coordinator, Craig Kuligowski, who used to be at Miami and went to Alabama for a little bit, um, his hiring in 2020 has worked great. The front seven does look explosive again, but you got to figure out, like, can the D limit the big plays? They gave up 165 plays of 10-plus yards last year. Uh, they got big names. They got Devin Maddox back as, as a wide receiver. They got safety Nate Bauer in, uh, defensive end Deshaun Johnson. Um, you got to clean up the penalties. You, you got to get the passing game going a little more. The offensive roster strength is a little weak, but with Finn again in his second year, he should improve that 57.6% completion percentage. Uh, they were 1-7 in, in one-score games in the last two seasons, and their kicker, Thomas Klukey, was only 14 out of 24 on field goals. You got to improve special teams. You got to get better uh, in the margins in order to be able to have one of those nine and three seasons like they're predicting. I think this team's going to be good. I mean, they, they've got an easy enough schedule. Um, I say easy enough. I mean, we know this side of the conference is a little bit stronger, but they're non conference. They've got LIU, UMass, at Ohio State, and at San Diego State. They, they should get at least two of those. They could Ooh, compete yeah. with San Diego State. So, Ooh. I mean, if, if you, you get... You think this team's better than we think. I, I've, got them, I've got them losing to San Diego State. I've got them 8-4. So, okay. you know. All right. I'm, I'm a little bit more pessimistic, I guess, about all these teams. I think I'm one game behind you on all of them. I've, I've got them 7-5. Okay. and 7-5, five. Seven and five. okay. That's a, well, you had... Uh, you had <laughs> excuse me, NIU at 7-5 too, right? Uh, yes, Northern Illinois. Okay. Yes, Oh, you had them seventy five, also. Yeah, yeah. So we're okay, right. we're about the same. So I I had Central Michigan at uh, at nine and three. You had them at eight and four. Uh, but you like uh, Toledo at da, 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 seven and five. Also. So yeah, I've got them eight and four. Uh, I think like I don't have them quite where SP Plus has them projected, which is Bill Conley's metric. Um, but I do think you know I, I I will tell you this. I think Western Michigan is going to drop off this year. Ball State is going to drop off quite a bit. Uh, they yep. should be able to handle Bowling Green uh, at Eastern Michigan. Could be a little tricky, but that's maybe only because I, I trust Chris Creighton. We'll talk about them in a minute. Um, you know, the other side of the conference, they they got Buffalo, Bowling Green, and do, 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 who am I missing? Uh, oh, Kent State. So, you know, I mean, they and, and they get Kent State at home. Like, I, I think the schedule sets up for them to have a pretty decent year. They could certainly... Uh, win the MAC this year, like it, yeah. but they could do that every year. So we'll just have to see. We'll see what they do. Uh, what do you think is? Do you think Jason Candle? There was a there was talk in the off season that he was being kind of recruited to take the Miami offensive coordinator job. Do you think that would have been a smart idea for him? No. Like with the I way that, with the way that things have gone until I mean it would have been a raise for sure, but oh, yes. the way that things have gone like it, it, it <laughs> not to not to be cliche but the candle is kind of burning out on Jason Candle a little bit. You remember how much hype there was for him uh, after uh, God? What's the what's the Iowa State coach's name? I just went blank. Matt Campbell after Matt Campbell Matt left. Campbell? Yeah, yeah. So once he left Toledo because he did a great job at Toledo. 
Jason Candle came in and had a really good first year, and everybody thought, oh, this is the next one. This is the next guy. And and it has not been that at all. Yeah, but hang on. That, that Miami OC job, that uh, that job equivalent will always be there. The, there'll, be, there'll be nine power five jobs looking for OCs all the time. Okay? So that's that's not that's not anything where you gotta run and jump at. If you don't take it now, that job's never coming to you. Okay? He can always go and do that. So. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Even if you get fired, that you'll still have a job. Like yep. that's a, okay. That, I guess that if, makes if sense. If you if you th- if you think he's good enough of a play caller and an offensive developer, then then somebody will hire him. That's true. That's I was looking at it as, as maybe a chance to take that job and then that can get you a, a P five job quicker than well, but the problem yeah. is, is if no, because because you got to look at the resume, man. If you're gonna hire him for a P five job, but he wasn't successful at Toledo, and the guy before him was successful at Toledo, and that guy's now moderately successful at P five, why would you take a chance on the guy that wasn't successful at the Toledo job, and then was an OC at a big boy school that might be ramping up? How much of that is his talent, and how much of that is him? Ah, okay. I think those yeah. questions. I think those questions are always going to be there. They're just always going to be there to try to get him a power five job. But there's uh, nothing yeah. wrong with if you can't if you can't be great at Toledo in three or four years, and you end up an OC at one of these monster schools with huge budgets, and you make a gang of money. Okay, like that's a great living. Why do you have to be the head coach? There's you know there's only so many of those big boy jobs out there. That's a valid point. That's you. You do have a valid point there. Uh, we will move on to the Ball State Cardinals. Break my time down here. Uh, Ball State last year, everybody thought was going to be a big, big season for the Cardinals and head coach Mike New. But the truth of the matter is, they went six and seven. They were lucky to make a bowl game. Uh, they went four and four in conference. Um, but last year, they were number one in returning production from a team that went, what, 7-1 and one, uh, in the yeah. COVID-shortened season? Like, they played really, really well, and then last year uh, just did not turn out the way that anybody expected it to. They lost their quarterback, Drew Plitt. They lost the wide receiver, like, long-time star wide receiver, Justin Hall. Safety, Bryce Cosby is gone. Both linebackers, Thomas and Albright, are gone. Uh, the right guard, Curtis Blackwell, out of here. I, this is this is not good. Like they are number one twenty seven in the country in returning production, um, and it's I mean it's not good across the board. Like their their roster strength overall right now is number one twenty five in the country. That is you know bottom six in FBS. Definitely not good. Uh, they do have you know some guys that that are that are sturdy. You got wide receiver Johannes Tyler. They got running back Carson Steele, linebacker Clayton Cole, cornerback Amici. Uzo Dinma, the third, or the second, excuse me. Um, they have a lot of efficient pieces on offense. And their new quarterback, John Paddock, has at least played some snaps. He got 48 snaps last year. But there's no proven playmakers on offense. Now, can you develop some? Absolutely. Uh, they were insanely balanced last year. Like this, <laughs> I looked at this. They had 444 rushes last year to 440 passes. So they were they were 50-50 rushing and passing, but they only averaged 4.98 yards per play. That was number 113 in the FBS. You got to improve consistency. You got to be more explosive on offense. Uh, and then the defense. I mean, it does not get better on that side. They lost six of eight snap leaders at linebacker. Their top three defensive backs are gone. Two of their top three offensive linemen are gone. Um, they only brought in two defensive transfers. So this will certainly be a youth movement, which, which New has done. And it, you know, capped off with that 2020 uh, season that was, you know, seven and one. Ended up winning the bowl game. All the, it was great. But is is Ball State just going to be one of those teams that has to rebuild, and then every four years they get a chance to compete for the conference title? Uh, it certainly looks like that's the direction he's going. They got five defensive linemen with over 200 snaps last year, but only two linebackers and three defensive backs. Uh, and that is from a defense that was, I mean, that was bad. They have got to figure out something in the secondary this year. Uh, brother, they were number 100 in defensive PPA per drive, but they were also number 108 in offensive PPA per drive. Like, 
it just makes no sense. Uh, it, they returned basically everybody last year. The offensive line injuries hurt them quite a bit last year, but but the defense was so bad. Um, there was nothing really that they were good at other than their turnover margin was number 25 in the country, and they were number 22 in penalties per game. Like, they were – that stuff that's really well coached. So, it, they're a well-coached team, I guess, fundamentally, but without real playmakers, I don't know that I expect any kind of improvement. They went 6-7 and seven last year and lost the bowl game. I, I've got them at 4-8, and eight, and I think that might be generous. Like, where are you looking for this team? All right, so we, we differ a little bit here, too. I've got them 5-6, and six, one game better than you. Um, four, how would you get to 4-8? and eight? Oh, I guess 5-7. Yeah, 5-7, right, and seven, yeah. My, 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 I, for somehow I didn't count a loss uh, somewhere. I got them five and seven, um, and and I don't think they're going to be great. But I, don't, you know, I think that's a little over market correction. Like last year, we thought they would be world beaters and win this conference, and this year, like there's a world where five and seven could be the worst team in this division. But you know, I, mean, I don't I don't know that it's just going to swing that far. I think at some point in time they're going to level out. They're going to find a way to win a couple of ball games that we're not expecting. And but some of that's because I think all these teams are capable of dropping a game, winning the game. Like I, I just don't see anybody as a juggernaut here. I, I mean, don't. you're not wrong there. You're not wrong on that. I, I looked at their schedule. They play these are their road conference games at Central Michigan, at Kent State, at Toledo, at Miami of Ohio. And then you've still got Western Michigan at home, which you know, Western Michigan is losing a lot, but I still think they've got a better roster than uh, than Ball State. Uh they got to play at Tennessee. They've got at Georgia Southern, which I've actually got as a win for them because it's early enough in the season. Uh, you got to play Northern Illinois at home. Like your your other non conference win that I believe is uh, is UConn, UConn and Murray State. Like you got those, but I mean this is a rough stretch that they got to go on. Um, you do get Eastern Michigan at home, and you get Ohio at home. So you know, could they win both of those? Absolutely. Uh, but I just did. Man, they lost so much last year, and I just have not. It's just, it's, I, I guess where you and I differ is I don't put that much weight on home field advantage for all these teams. I've seen way too many of these teams. It, it, it's not like 100,000 strong are going to be out here. Now, okay? You're not wrong. Yeah. I just don't think, I just don't think the fact that, oh, well, they're just going to lose all their, home, their road games, like their only possible wins are home games. That doesn't make any sense to me because I watch it happen every year. That's okay. I can I can get with you. It's not so much the road home stuff. It is, man. It was already pretty difficult anyway going against those teams that are a lot more stacked than this roster. Um, and then you put in that added element of, you know, then yeah, then you got to travel. On. But that's what that's what you you think those rosters are more stacked. Just like we thought Ball State was stacked last year. But we don't know. We don't know until they start yeah. playing. Yeah. No. You're you're correct. You're correct. We we whiffed on Ball State quite a bit last year. I think I had them going eight and four, and they, I mean they went six and six, but you know, still uh, still not quite up to expectation last season. They just they were not good across the board any any of the stats. So uh, I mean, I'm got- one game different than you, but I would bet that I would I would have if I had to bet right now, I bet they would be more likely to go six and six than four and eight. Like I'd rather I I think they'd win one more game than I think they would. Over lose a game, I think they would. So you are you a big believer in Mike New, huh? I don't know that that's a big believer though. Like six and six is not a big believer in anybody. Six that's and true. six in a in a in a in a Mac team. Come on, <laughs> what is that a believer in? That's that's a believer in every team is the exact same. So they're, so yes. they'll basically all end up six and six. But uh, but I've said that. Like I, they're, yeah, I don't, they're not all going to end up six and six. But I I I think at best a team is going to to win two games more than they lose in this in this situation, in okay. this division. I no, don't no, see I'm anybody with... being three or four games better than everybody else That's a, on this side of the ball. It's a valid point. It is a valid point. Uh, let's jump into Eastern Michigan. we got two more that we got to knock out here. The Eastern Michigan Eagles. And you know how much I love Chris Creighton. Uh, went seven and six last year, which was uh, which was really good. Really good for them. Went four and four in the conference. Uh, they were five and eight against the spread. They had some really unlikely wins. Just random stuff, you know, Western Michigan, everything else, where they were winning games by like one point here. Um, you know, Creighton is the offensive coordinator, too, here. 
So uh, if if the offense was was good, it played well on him. Ben Bryant, the quarterback, transferred back over to Cincinnati, and they brought in Taylor Powell from Troy to be the new quarterback. Uh, can he be as good or efficient as Bryant? I don't know. That's a lot to ask. Uh, the passing game was efficient, but they were number 82 in rushing success rate last year. They need offensive linemen to step up here. Um, and as far as the guys that they lost, uh, one of the big ones, Mike Van Hoven, the center, uh, he's a he was a key, key part of that offensive line. Uh, without him, you know, we'll see. We'll see what they look like. Um, they do return uh, Jose Ramirez on the def- uh, defensive line, defensive tackle there. Uh, wide receiver Hassan Baden, uh, live, excuse me, left guard uh, Saidi Sow and Darius Boone, the running back, are back. So you've got guys that that have a lot of experience there. Uh, the defense they got fourteen players returning with two hundred plus snaps each. But again, the question is, are any of them good? They were number one thirteen in PPA per drive on defense last year. Number one twenty seven in defensive rushing success rate allowed. Defensive passing success rate allowed at number one fifteen in the country. Uh, that ain't good. That is, I mean, they. It, I, I don't even know how to quantify how bad it is because uh, we saw the same thing with some of these other teams. Like, it, some of these defenses were just putrid. Um, and they just gave up explosive plays all the time, et cetera, except for these guys. They were number 15 in explosive play rate, which was crazy. Uh, my question here is, has Creighton already peaked as the coach? Now, they've made four bowl games since 2016, before he showed up, the last winning season was in 1994, and they had only made two bowl games in their existence. This is a really, really difficult job. The roster is always bottom 30 nationally, but as far as team strength with the experience and everything else tied in, they're sixth in the MAC this year. If you can keep the offense rolling, that's one thing, but the defense still has to be better. Uh, this roster does not show me a bowl game, but... You know, the, my trust in Chris Creighton might actually get me there again. Which, by the way, I'm, I need to bring this up. Uh, their defensive passing game coordinator and their safeties coach for the last seven years, Fred Reed, uh, just died on Sunday. So what what exactly was his role? How much does that play in? Does the team fight, uh, you know, for his memory? Or, you know, I'm curious what something like that does for a team like this. Uh do they have this crazy year because they lost him in the offseason? I'm curious about that. Um, and there's no news on that, by the way. They said it was a medical emergency, uh, and it's you know it's a shame to hear that. We, you know, thoughts and prayers, the the typical uh, cliche thing, but obviously thoughts are with the uh, the team and the family and everything else with Fred Reed. But uh, overall, this is this is not a greatly built team. Uh, I I just. You know I love Chris Creighton. I couldn't get there. I've got him five and seven. But I mean, if they made a bowl game, it would not surprise me um, because it's the MAC. What uh, what do you think here? Uh, I think this team is going to be up and down. I think it's going to be. They're, I think they're going to struggle. I think they're going to struggle to to look consistent offensively and defensively. I, I don't know that they do anything great. That's my biggest problem with this team. I don't know if there's anything that they're really, really good at. The only thing that we're good at last year was uh, was their passing success rate was number 17. Their rushing success rate was number 82. Uh, yeah. But but they lost their quarterback. So, you know, and he transferred over to Cincinnati. It, like, Taylor Powell was not great in Chip Lindsay's offense at uh, Troy. So, you know, he's got talent, but does it show here? Like, can Creighton coach him know. up? I I gave them five and seven. I got no idea if that's close, if that's good. There's nothing that – and I don't mean to be insulting. There's nothing that they do on paper and last year on film that has – that that I would I would use the word impressive. I'd, I've got, like – I've got an idea that they could be all right. So they play Eastern Kentucky. Uh, they've got Buffalo at home. They've got UMass at home. Uh, they play at Akron. Um you know, those are those are some of the wins that I see. I even gave them a win over Toledo just because it would be the most, you know, Chris Creighton thing ever and the most Jason yeah. Candle thing ever. Um, so that's how I've got them to five and seven. But, like, you tell me that they beat Northern Illinois 
uh, or Ball State or any, anybody else. Like, it makes sense to me because Chris Creighton is such a good coach. Uh, yeah. Proof of that, by the way, turnover margin last year, number 43. Penalties per game, they were number one in the country with the least penalties per game. They do not beat themselves. Like, but I, I don't know. I don't know how to quantify that into wins, right? Like that's they're just they're not as talented as some of these other uh, some of these other teams in the division. Uh, so you know, so long as they don't beat themselves, like you're going to be able to find another winner here, right? Yeah. Some some of these teams, some of these teams I have with a very similar record are, are one or two games better than them, and and it's you know, do I think they're going to be consistent? No, but do I think they're good? Yes. Like, I think that they show flashes of either being a really good defensive team, and if they can just keep the scoring under control, they can win those games. Are teams that can score well, and if they can just get stops here or there, the ball bounces their way. Like, I think they show positive aspects. on that. I really can't figure out what Eastern Michigan's good at. That's, and I, I, think, that's the, I think that's the one I think that's the one thing that makes me – if I was going to give no pick on anything – for this team, it, this would be the or in this conference, the whole conference. I'd have been like, th- this is the one team that I don't, I don't know anything about that I can honestly say I think this, and I think that that's actually real. I don't know. I just, and that's just being honest. I know that's a terrible analysis for anybody <laughs> listening to try to actually, but that's I don't know. I, I'd rather not lie to you. I don't want to do some hyperbole thing and be like, oh, I think they're going to go eight and four and try to sell you a bunch of bullshit, or you know, talk trash and say they're going to be terrible. I don't know. It's it, you, it's a fair point. It's a fair point. Last team on the docket, the Western Michigan Broncos. Tim Lester last year took this team to an eight and excuse me eight and five record. Uh, they went six six and one against the spread. They won their bowl game. Absolutely blew out Nevada. And after that, the quarterback Caleb Ellaby and their wide receiver, star wide receiver Sky Moore. Both decided they were going to leave early for the NFL draft. And Sky Moore got drafted and Caleb Ellaby did not. Uh, but they lost a lot of other dudes as well. Wide receiver Jalen Hall transferred to Western Kentucky. The tight end Anthony Torres transferred to Toledo. Stayed in conference there. Defensive end Ali Fayad. Uh, the nose guard Ralph Holy. Uh, Holly, excuse me. A.J. Thomas, the linebacker. Center Mike Caliendo. I mean, they lost some stud dudes. Uh, returning production, they are number 124 in the country, only returning 49% of their production, and they are dead last in offensive returning production, 27%. Uh, that ranks number 130. The defense, a little bit better, number 53 in the country at 70%. Um, the roster strength is still pretty good because they have recruited uh, really well for a MAC team. Tim Lester has done a good job. Uh, the, the running back, Sean Tyler, like he's back. The wide receiver, Corey Crooms, is black. Uh, uh, excuse me, back. Uh, Sam Houston State's left tackle, Elisa Anderson. I believe that's how you say that. He is coming in, and he should be a hoss for them on the offensive line. Uh, they got Braden Fisk back at defensive tackle. Cornerback, Dorian Jackson back. Linebacker, Zaire Barnes. Uh, looking at the offense, with without Ellaby, uh, you know, what is this team? Like, I don't know who starts between uh, Salopek and Hrabowski. Um on top of that, in five seasons, Lester has really only had two starting quarterbacks. Like, will the efficiency drop off? Because Caleb Ellaby was a playmaker. I mean, he was awesome. This team passed the ball 62% of the time last year. They had a 62-38 split. I'm curious if Lester changes his philosophy if he can't find a quarterback that he trusts. Um, they need to replace four of their top six pass catchers. So that's certainly not good for an offense that throws the ball that much. Uh, and then looking at the defense, you know, this defense was not bad. They were number seven in the country in defensive passing success rate allowed, uh, but they were number 124 in explosive play rate. Um, if you look at it, like, they ranked number 92 in 20-plus yards uh, plays allowed, um, which is crazy because of the, the passing success rate there. But there are playmakers at every level of this defense. The question is, can they actually play together? My keys to the season here are the defense has to limit the big plays and yet maintain their third down defense, which was number three in FBS last year. The offense has got to replace LB. They need new receiving threats to uh, establish themselves. The running back, Sean Tyler, is probably going to be a hoss here. They need consistency. This team upset Pitt last year and then got stomped a couple of games later at home by Ball State, who was not very good. I, 
just just play with consistency. That's what I'm looking for here. I've got him going seven and five based on roster strength alone. Um, you know, like I I think they can win at San Jose State. I think they can beat New Hampshire. I think they can beat Eastern Michigan, Ohio, uh, Miami of Ohio, Bowling Green. Like these are all teams that talent wise, this team should be better than. I've I've got them seven and five because I trust Tim Lester. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if they miss a bowl game this year if the quarterback doesn't hit. Like I, you know. Right. <clears throat> so I I got them five and seven. This is so this is the biggest one we've got we're we're against because usually we're one game apart. Um, and then now we're two. I uh I don't listen now. You're going to besmirch the good name of the the, the San Jose State Trojans. Come on. <laughs> Uh, I'm not doing that. This is this is a hard non-con schedule right here. I mean, outside of New Hampshire, they got Michigan State, they got Pitt, they got San Jose State. That's tough. And, and uh, but you 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 rang the bell at the very end. The last thing you said, it's all going to come down to the quarterback they pick, and is oh, yeah. he the right guy? And and here's the problem: if he's not the right guy, by the time you realize he's not the right guy, how many winnable games have you lost? All right, so so. Because the schedule is real hard early, you let let's say let's say you you beat Michigan State, you lose Michigan State, you get walked. Then you then let's say you you win a game against Ball State, then you get walked against Penn State, and let's say you let's say you lose San Jose State, then you beat New Hampshire. Have you figured out if your quarterback is good yet or not? No, not really, not really. All I right, mean, you, so, you got so an idea. Not- but so yeah. you're not gonna, yeah. But when you're playing these real good teams and or these really bad teams, you're not gonna be able to judge your guy. You're just not. I would, I, if I was in a quarterback battle, I would be going to my AD and I'd be telling him, "Look, I don't want stars and scrubs at the first half of the schedule for non cons. Okay, I know we got a bunch of pay for wins. These big boys are gonna cut us a check to kick the shit out of us." But I can't be playing New Hampshire. I need to find a team. And I guess San Jose will be your best test, right? That's your most even playing field that you're going to find probably. Well, that yeah, that but, and Ball State, I guess. And, oh, yeah, you get Ball State second game of the season. But, like, I, I you're right about that. I, I just feel like if you get it wrong, it could go real south real fast. Because by the time you're making the change, you could be four losses into the season already. Yeah. And you got half the season left. And then you got to hope the next guy, A, picks up the offense, or what if you were right all along and the next guy's worse than the first guy? And you just don't know. When you have an unknown, like a low star, um, you know, not highly recruited quarterback battle going in, you just don't know enough about these guys until they see a lot of bullets, until you get them on the field and you start getting them against – Live competition. You just can't practice this. It's just not possible to find out in practice. Yeah, what you hope for is that one of them establishes themselves uh, in fall camp. Early. Yeah. Real early. Yeah, I'm talking dominates. And, and, and you never want this, but you kind of want the other guy, if he's not going to be the dude, to kind of fall to pieces. Because you just don't want the question mark. You yeah. don't You don't want it to be tight because then, you you know, you're in game four or five against San Jose State. And you're trying to figure out shit. Which one of these dudes do I put out here? Who do we go with? What are we doing? Yeah, uh, because it, it, like we always talk about coaches point, know everything. Let's say they're two. Yeah, but they, but they, they don't. Be two and two at that point, and you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> no, and and I can't say if I was the coach, I would know either. Like some, if these guys are really close, some of these guys, it's tough. It's hard. That's why they get paid a lot of money to do it. They got to make these decisions. This and is true. If you're wrong, if you make the wrong call, it could go south. Early, and that's that's the only reason it's a five and seven, because I don't know enough about either one of these quarterbacks, and I feel like if you're flipping a coin right now, it, it doesn't matter where the coin lands. I think they're going to second guess it, which means at some point in time they're going to try to pivot to try to do something different in the middle of the season, and I just don't think that ends well. And I don't know that that's oh that's a bad coach. I, I think every coach would struggle with that. I think every one of them would. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I'm with so you. I don't blame the coach for that situation. I don't blame the kids for that situation. It's just a situation where you just want to have a, a court. Listen, my team, my LSU football team is, is dealing with this right now. I think yeah, we got you got two three guys, guys that are that are going to be neck and neck all the way up. And if Brian Kelly makes the wrong call on the wrong dude, the season could be over by week five. I mean, it could be over by like week three. Week, well, yeah, I guess you're right if you're talking about yeah. trying to win a national championship because you lose two games at the ball game. But, like, 
that's that's the thing that you got to deal with when you've got a quarterback battle. You got a school like Ole Miss, they brought in a transfer, they know who their guy is. He ain't compete with anybody. Okay. They, they can say all the camp stuff they want to say about, oh, this other guy is looking good. That's all bullshit. Okay. The big five star kid that got transferred in, he's going to start, he's going to play. That's the end of the story. <laughs> like they know who the quarterback is. I'd rather have that than a quarterback battle. True. True. Uh, by the way, let me uh, let me correct you on some. Uh, San Jose State is the Spartans, not the Trojans. Uh, apparently, they they oh, frown sure. on the Trojans. <laughs> so, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm just sure. in case was, there's that, any San Jose that, that, State nope, fans, that's, <laughs> that's on me. That, that's just on me. It is all good. All right. Hey, listen, there... we we've, we've talked. Listen, we've talked San Jose State more than any college football podcast in the country. I'll I think put you're right. My name on that. I think you're right. I'll put my name on that. <laughs> we talked a lot, I just, especially. I just got that. I just got, I just got that wrong. Uh, especially with Nick Starkle at quarterback, right? Like we talked quite a bit about them yeah. two years ago and last year. Um, yeah, now last, they kind of fell to pieces. Couple years, we, we've we've won we've won some money on them. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at Everything dot com or Chris at Everything dot com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.